um, just getting things started and seeing how things are looking. Let me know if you can hear me, if you can see me, all that sort of stuff. Um, I didn't actually write a list today, which is really stupid. And I've just literally realized I don't have a list. I normally have something that I can work off, uh, but I don't. So we're going to seat of the pants today. It has been one of those insane weeks where everything just goes just that little bit haywire and not in a bad way, but just, you know, things happen and you just have to sort of hope for the best, really. At the, at the end of the day, we just hope for the best. Um, look, it's one of those things, you can plan and you can plan and you can plan and you can have a really solid, good plan. You've got deadlines, you've got um, sort of things that you wanna do. And then it's not until you're in the midst of it that you realize, okay, having this promotion at the same time as this may not have been the cleverest of ideas <laughs> and then you know and then I mean the thing is you don't realize or more that I don't know about you guys but I didn't plan to get sick two weeks before everything happened for two weeks in the week before I should say so it sort of meant that I had to do things in a different order than I'd planned to like as in preparation and things because it's just literally some things you can't do while you're sick. Um, hi everybody, that's exciting. Like, it's good to see you all here. I'm excited about the Mystery Yarn Club. I'm totally not giving any spoilers away today. Um, Kim is in charge of spoiling everybody. Is that, 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 did that come out right? I don't know if that actually came out right. <laughs> Kim has been posting some beautiful photos over on the spoiler thread of the Fiberific group on Ravelry. Um, oh, excuse me. Um, so yeah, so it's one of the, it's, if you want to go and see what went out in this month's Mystery Lace Club this week, go and check out Kim, uh, go and check out the spoiler thread on Ravelry. Good morning, everybody. Kim's put in heaps of photos. Uh, if you're not quite sure how to do it, you need to actually click. There is a, a, a line that says spoiler in one of Kim's posts. Click that and it'll show all the pictures. Um, good morning, Jennifer P. Now, for those of you that are still waiting on your Mystery Lace Clubs, I was having a look on Australia Post just before, and it seems that quite a few of the parcels are sitting at Granville. Um, so there's still a few to arrive into their locations yet I'm surprised at which ones are hitting their homes first um, there's like you know I'm in Brisbane so you know having a few locally hit first is really really um, really good but there was one that had to go much further afield that it's already landed as well Jess says I love your crochet blanket in the screen this is the, um, it's, I've just started, it's going to be, I'm just gonna lift it up to the other camera here. It's going to be a single size bed blanket for Abby's bed, just in a basic chevron blocks of color. So there's four and four of this gray and this, this, uh, this teal or peppermint, I think it might be called. Um, there were some colors from Bendigo Woolen Mills. This is luxury eight ply. They were some colors that were, you know how they do those Sorbet limited edition colors? It was some of those. So the gray was their licorice. And I think, I can't, I meant to grab the tags. Totally forgot to grab the tags. Um, so I think, I think the green is, oh, just move that. Don't do that again, Chantel. I think the green is peppermint. It's a, it's a really pretty teal. It's Abby's, it's, this color is Abby, if that makes sense. Anything that she has done in her room, it's that color, it's like, battling her pink walls so she likes lots of grays blues and teals in her room to battle the pink walls she desperately wants me to paint the walls um i desperately don't want to paint so i'm like yes i will make you all the things in the colors that are not pink so because i tried to talk her out of the pink walls years and years ago but she was desperate for pink mm. so this week has been wonderful and chaotic all at the same time welcome to fiberific if you didn't know that's how things always are here 
Um, we've had the Mystery Lace Club went out on Tuesday. Um, Kim popped in and snavelled her box, but also helped me get some things sorted out for everybody else's, which is wonderful. Um, and 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 cake. Seriously, those cakes, they were just... <sighs> what was the name of the place again? I can't remember. I've got a photo of it with the tag on it so I can remember where to go. Um, but yeah, so we had the Mystery Lace Club go out on Tuesday, but also it is the third birthday for the Fiberific website. Now, it's not the third birthday for Fiberific. Fiberific's about to turn seven um, or seven later in the year. But um, it is the third birthday of the of the actual website. When I first started Fiberific, I started it very much as an in-person, only going to events kind of business. And I'd attend all the spinning camps and and um, all the local little craft groups and, and all that sort of stuff. And I still hit a couple of them every now and again. I always go to Redlands Open Day. I love Redlands Open Day. Um, oh, hi, Vanessa. I met Vanessa at Redlands Open Day. Um, Vanessa came to my rescue when I was having a panic attack over chowgu needles not being in the right order on the rack. <laughs> I don't use that system anymore because it's too stressful. Um, <laughs> so, but Vanessa was wonderful and came to my rescue. And Kim's popped in the name. I'm not going to destroy that by saying it, but that's where Kim got these delicious, amazing... French pastries from and they were they were just unbelievable I don't think I've ever had anything quite so delicious and I'm you know I've had a few nice things um so yeah so I still go to a few of the in-person events I tend to hang out more here on YouTube and um and you know caffeinated craft is more regular smaller things rather than the big terrifying events um, except for Bendigo. Bendigo is big and terrifying. Also a long way to drive, but totally worth it. It is so overwhelmingly amazing. I don't know how to describe Bendigo. I just, there's so many people who are just so, so passionate about what I'm doing. Now, I've just realized I went live and I haven't shut the front door. I'm going to go and shut the front door. You guys talk amongst yourselves and I shall return post haste. Oh, let's have a look here. Allegra's booked her bendy flights and accommodation. I guess I'm going. Oh, brilliant. I'm glad you're going. Hi, Magda Makes. Welcome to our group. Kim is trying to keep everyone. Sorry about that. I, I normally make sure all the doors are sort of locked before I start um, chatting, I like before I hit the live button. But I don't know what I was thinking and just went live. Um, and then I've just realized that um, a message saying that an Australia Post delivery was coming. So I was like, oh, they're gonna bang, they're gonna walk in and be all noisy and be like, hi. So I thought I better fix that. Um, now I'm all puffed because I've moved quite quickly for me in a busted knee. So I've been having some fun with my knee of late, you guys. If you follow me on Chantel.hills at on Instagram, um, I uh, have been I'm not going to use the word berated, but I feel berated by my physio. Apparently, I've been doing too much. Surprise, shock horror. Um, and so they've had to actually tape my knee to slow me down, really, is what it's boiling down to. Um, and I have to have the knee taped for three days and then off for one day. So I'm off for one day today, uh, purely because I ran out of the actual tapes that I need at home. So this afternoon I have to go shopping. Um, chastise. Chastise is a much better word. Thank you. They did tut me. They tut me and then poked things really hard to make them hurt. That's what they do at physio, isn't it? Um, aircon. Aircon is back. 
So yesterday afternoon, a lovely boy, I'm going to say boy, he seemed very young. He may not have been. Maybe I was just feeling particularly old yesterday um, and today. I'm feeling particularly old today. Um, he came in, jumped up on the roof, did some stuff, you know, magic. And then he had to go and get a part. And then he came back with the part. They had to sh shut down the power for the entire, like the shed and the, and the office area. And uh, next thing you know, blah, blah, ding, everything's working. And then he's also had a look at the aircon in this room because even when the other one, um, even like when the aircon was working, this room just seemed to be quite stuffy. And so he had a look and he just moved, a, there was a silver thing and it had a bit of a kink in it. He said it was nothing dramatic. He doesn't understand why it made such a big difference, but it made a huge difference. So um, it was... It's lovely. It's actually really cold in here and I'm like, I should turn the heat up, but I'm not going to. I'm going to sit here like this looking and then eventually going blue and matching the yarn. Um, but yeah, I'm going to really enjoy it because it's really muggy and like, I'm not sure if any, like I know some of you are here in Queensland and I know some of you are here in Australia, but I also know some of you are not from Australia. And uh, we've got Cyclone Norma is around off of Queensland coast somewhere so we're getting a nice little whipping of wind and rain and it's like these torrential showers like it'll be nothing it'll be literally like little pockets of blue sky and I'll be driving along and next thing you know it's like you can't see you've got to get your wife is going like a crazy thing so we're getting that kind of that kind of no rain then rain but it's also windy so the water's drying up really quickly which I actually quite like because I don't like it when the water hangs around um sorry I'm like hands moving like a crazy uh, why don't I use my hands and work on Abby's blanket um <laughs> so yeah so there's just been so much happening for me um, Kim says, it's blue sky up my street and dark cloud over my house <laughs> Oh, uh, yesterday I was having sort of, I had so much to do. I couldn't actually leave the office because I wanted, I had, I'd missed some posts the day before and making sure that all the mystery lace clubs went out. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that I got all of yesterday's mail out. I'd gotten some things in from Chow Goo that needed to go out, which reminds me one more needs to go out. Um, and then, um, but it got to the point where like the boys in the shed were having to shut their roller door down because the rain was just coming in sideways in just huge sheets and then they'd roll it back up and it'd dry out really fast. Um, this camera angle is not working for me today. I don't know why. Anyway, um, but yeah, so it's just, it's just insane. I have to Google to see what the weather system was. Maddie was hoping he'd get, well, no, we're up to N. Um, there was Marcus in the Northern Territory and this one's Nora. So yeah, we're, we're, I'm sorry, Maddie, but you missed one. The rain was super real. I got caught on a dog walk. Oh my gosh. I would hate to be caught out walking in this right now. Yesterday I had to, I feel like I have to park the car 14 kilometers away at the moment. It's not, but it just feels like it. And um, I was walking in the driveway, like with my box of, you know, with my laptop and everything in it and just got rained on like just basically from the gates to the office and the guys in the shed were like getting wet ho huh? and I was like ah oh, yeah yep yeah, thanks it's great um so I really was like far from impressed so yeah so we had M for Marcus he was the cyclone that up was up on the northern territory and now we've got Nora that's pounding away at the east coast of Australia right now so who expected a full-on weather report here today? Uh, we were waiting because L was Linda, so M was going to be a male one. Yeah, Marcus. Uh, your mic is going soft and then loud, not sure why. I've just realized I'm actually quite far away from it. And I'm also very animated today because I'm still finishing my first coffee. Oh, that can't go there. You can't see the leg. It's like, let, that just destroys the illusion that that everything's magic. Hang on. I'll bring it closer to me. All right. How is that? Is that better? Um, let me look at these levels. It might be a bit... I'll just drop my crochet now. Oh, all right. I'm going to have a sip of my coffee and take a deep breath and calm the farm, basically. Okay. 
Um, I just got a message from someone who I would like to reply to asking what time this chat is. And I just want to let her know it's now so that she can come and join us. Hopefully, hopefully if she has time, if she has time, we will say, where is it? Let's go here. Um, there we go. So we'll see if we get a special visitor. I don't know if we will. Hang on a second. I'm monitoring off my phone again, you guys. You know how I'm doing that. Um, so that, oops, come on, back to the, back to that. There we go. Oh, it's going to make me watch an ad again. How annoying. Um, that's, that's not doing anything there at all. Are you guys, breathing is good. Yes, breathing is good. Um, oops, I'll just whack the camera. I'll just whack all the things today. All right. Okay, it wasn't Kim. What wasn't Kim? Did I miss something? We love magic. Um, oh, hang on. All right. Oh my God, you mean behind the scenes? We love magic. Breathing is good. It wasn't me. <laughs> no, yeah. So I'm not sure who saw. Um, I popped a photo up on Instagram, sort of from what you would see if you walked in this door and looked this way. So you guys see what I see, um, sort of from the opposite way. I should, I, one day I should take a photo of sitting in my chair facing out so you can see how blinding, blindingly light. Oh, it wasn't you who sent the message? No, because I think you know when the live chat is. This person has never joined in our live chat. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's, it's hard to sometimes get a good photo of behind the scenes because you work so hard to make this and and this area here really good for you guys but getting a good behind the scenes photo because there's bad lighting over there and and then there's you know stuff that's cropped out of the shots because it's a mess because this is actually a workroom um while i've got this beautiful wall of yarn here i've got all the skeiners and swifts over there i've got all the rolls of photography paper over on this side like that side i'll just <laughs> because I've, I've really cropped this window down. Um, but yes, yeah, so, yeah, the three big lights, it's right. So I've got a light basically sort of straight up to light this so you get this with no no evil shadows. And then I've got two lights on me so that I don't look quite so old. Although I need, I think I need an underlight to get rid of the shadow. Um, I'm not going to do that, don't panic. Um, but yeah, so there's lots of things to sort of do to get everything going and yeah i look forward to these live chats it's my highlight of my wednesday nights thank you rebecca i love it when you message like i'll put in a i'll put in a, a like a chat test to make sure the chat's coming up through my system and then uh and then you'll you'll reply to it and i'm like oh there's someone already here that's so exciting um you need one of those ring lights oh, look i like the ring light idea i really do i just don't like the ring light price tags to get a decent one, you're looking at a fairly good chopper change. Um, that the makeup, yeah, well, see, the other problem is then, you know, I might need makeup. And I will confess that for live chats, I, no makeup. This is me. <laughs> you guys didn't know that already. Um, no, so I would be afraid that too much light might show more imperfections than what I'm comfortable with. Yeah, you do need to have them quite close. And they make your eyes do the pretty thing with the little like bing of light. Um, I think they're fantastic, actually. I think they're a really good tool. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so it's, it's oh, this camera, I keep bumping it and it keeps pushing away. So, um, but yes, it's, it's one of those things where it, the, you're a hero. I put on at least BB cream and powder even for a 5 a.m. meeting. Ah, oh, man. I'm, lo I'm looking forward to making some more pre-recorded YouTube videos because I want to make the videos. I'm not looking forward to putting makeup on for them. Nobody wants to see barefaced 5 a.m. Allegra. I can tell you no one wants to see Chantel full stop at 5 a.m. I am not a happy person. Um, I hire a makeup artist whenever there are photos involved. <laughs> oh man, can you imagine if I could like do that? That would be great. 
I've got a cousin who's a makeup artist. She just lives so far away. Otherwise, I'd be like, hey, Shani. Um, <laughs> Kim wants to know why Allegra is having 5 a.m. meetings. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's in America. Yeah, Allegra works with people on different time zones, so she's got to be flexible. So it's probably better than like 1 a.m. meetings and then still having to get up and go to work, right? Uh, Allegra says, my 5 a.m. was cancelled today and so I've just had my 6 a.m. Ah, oh, fun. And now you've got time to chat and hang with us. So that's brilliant. Um, now, for those of you that are just joining the chat, I can't tell. I can't tell. Uh, make sure that you hit the thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you click on that subscribe button and maybe even hit the little bell. That way you're notified when I go live and you don't miss any of these live chats. Um, or any other videos that I may or may not put up, which hopefully will start coming back into the feeds in the next week or two. Yay! I'm not promising though. Totally not promising. Um, so yeah, so we've got some new stuff coming. We've got the Mystery Lace Club. The very first one went out this week. So we're starting to see it as people, um, as people start to get the mystery lace boxes. We're getting a, uh, I'm getting to see people's reactions, which is really awesome. Um, the, it, for those of you that have received a letter that said use the hashtag mystery lace club, I think we're gonna have to change that because I've talked to you, I've actually had a discussion with staff at Instagram because it wasn't working properly. And I was like, why doesn't it work? This is silly. This is the hashtag that I want to use. And it turns out that some maybe not, maybe some less than appropriate people use Mystery Lace Club for something else. So it's constantly um, monitored. And so it's not good. So we're going with Fiberific MLC for MLC for Mystery Lace Club. So let's hope I don't get in any trouble that way. Um, but that, that one seems to be working. So I'll be pushing that out with the hashtag Fiberific MLC. So if you want to start seeing what's in the Lace Club and you don't want to join Ravelry, which I don't understand, like seriously, these people that don't want to join Ravelry, who are you even? Um, Kim says here, today is the first day I haven't got fancy cake shop cake to eat. Maybe I should go and buy some so I don't break my streak. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, now, now I'm curious. Uh, yeah, Allegra, uh, I would agree. But the thing is, there's nothing there. So even the, um, there's, a, a, I've posted a couple of times and I think Kim has posted a couple of times and it'll say four posts or something like that, but there's no pictures. So I'm not sure what's going on. I don't know. So I'm, and they won't really explain themselves to me because, you know, why do they have to? Um, their Instagram and who are we just, you know, or who am I maybe is more the case. So, um, yeah, it's one of those, one of those fun little things that that's the most safe for work version I can come up with. Should I Google Mystery Lace Club? Now nah, I did, cause I thought what's going on? And it was the only thing that really came up in the first two pages was fiberific stuff anyway. So I was just like, okay, I don't understand. Oh, bye Jennifer. Have a great day. Maybe not at work. I don't know. Look, I used Chrome and I Googled it and I didn't get any surprises. Admittedly, I didn't do Google images. I just did a Google search just to see what would come up. Um, I've lost count now. It's all right. It's a perfect number. Um, and yeah, so it's one of those. Oh, man. What am I doing? What day is it? Um, yeah, I just I didn't get anything to that. I didn't, you know, I mean, I didn't dig too deeply, but. Anyway, can't can't use that hashtag. It just doesn't seem to work. So we're using um, Fiberific MLC for Mystery Lace Club. I would quite happily like to write MLC more often than Mystery Lace Club. I did not consider how many times I would need to type it out when I came up with the name. Probably would have come up with something a bit shorter. Uh, <laughs> it's one of those things. Um, but yeah, so hashtag Fiberific MLC and you will see some other things. Um, there are three pics showing for the Mystery Lace Club on Insta now, although it says five posts, so um, two must, 
Look, I don't even think that's the case. So, because I, I went through and checked and two of mine weren't showing up. One of them was our cakes picture. Um, uh, here we go, Jane Storer. Hey, hi, how are you going? Um, is a variety of images, lots more shawls than you think. GIS is a variety. I don't know what that means. I think I've missed something. Tara says, when I search, there's a there's my club, a book club, and a couple of other knitting fiber related clubs. There you go. So I don't know what the deal is, just Instagram. That shows, oh, that shows for you now. Maybe after I had a talk to them, they went through and released some. I don't know. I'm gonna keep using both because, you know, it's, it's, I just, you know, I'll use both. I'm fine with that. And if I, if I can, I'll go through and add whichever one people don't have as a comment on their um, on theirs and we'll see if they start to show up as well so yeah it's just it's interesting I it was not really something that hit my radar until what Tuesday that I thought it was going to become an issue um, and then because I'd already made arrangements to use that one and there's some promotion stuff coming using that particular hashtag I couldn't really change it um, this is, this is, let me just see if I can, let's see if that works better. Sorry, you guys have to just bear with me while I wiggle this around. I was all comfy and had it all sorted out, but I don't know what I've done. I've done something. I think I made one of the legs short or, I don't know. I don't know. I'll just keep moving it around until I'm happy though. Hope it doesn't bother you. <laughs> Uh, Kim's just made up random hashtags. I make up random hashtags all the time too. But for this particular one, I wanted I wanted something, you know, name specific. And it was like, no one else was using it and it didn't have any things in it. So I was like, sweet as. And then it's, yeah, that's why. Mm. Anyway, moving on, deadlines. Am I the only person when it comes to my knitting and crochet deadlines to being specific like crafting deadlines? Am I the other only one who goes, oh, I think I'll make my mum this really elaborate, amazing thing that should take me about six months for, for a birthday in February and cast it on in the middle of January? Am I the only one who does that? Or do you guys all like Uber plan? Um, I know some of you have got like crafting diaries that you use and I... The more I think about it, the more I think I need to be that organized, but I like go, oh, pretty, cast on. Oh, shiny things, cast on. So um, Kim says, I normally don't even hashtag because I fail as an Insta star. <laughs> oh, but your, but your photos, Kim, they're, they're amazing. I, I don't know that sounds facetious, but it's, it is an in-joke with Kim. I don't panic. I wasn't, her photos are great. Like they really are. So <laughs> go and check Kim out on Instagram. She has great photos of yarn things and crafty things and sewing things. So it's awesome fun. Um, and she works so hard. Uh, Tara says, I honestly think that's everyone. I honestly don't think organization and crafting are supposed to mesh. Um, I agree and disagree with that. Um, see, look at this. I move it, it's all good, and then it's not good. It's because I move my hands. It's because I like to crochet like this is really how I like to crochet. I like to crochet like this. Can I make the camera? See, look. Oh, no, no, not the... Ruin the illusion. We're ruining the illusion. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to put it back. Tilt it down a bit, Chantel. You can see the legs. I can't have the legs showing. Allegra loves her strict planner. Yeah, oh, that's right, because you got that cool one, didn't you? Um, Allegra's got a crafting diary. Um, I totally don't. I decided I had these balls of yarn and I was watching a craftsy class because I've got Craftsy Unlimited, which I I love. Like I know I have to, I don't get to keep the classes, but I am writing myself a list of the classes that I would purchase if I wanted to access them again. And I'm also writing a, a list of classes that I've noped out of for whatever reasons, whether it's production or content or, or whatever. It just, it just, hang on, if I go like that and then tilt that, that might work better. 
Um, dun, 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 dun. There we go. Let's see. No, because what happens is I've aimed it on there and then I automatically pull it back. I just have to stop doing that. Um, the layout is 80% exactly what I want. I don't use many of the knitting project features because I use Ravelry. Um, I saw diary at type. I saw a diary at typo that said something like, "My getting stuff done book on the cover." Typo had some of the best covers, and like if you read the sides of their pencils, like they crack me up. I love the stuff at Typo. Just how they, um, it just it seems like they don't care if they if they offend, and. And I like that because I don't get offended by the stuff on it. And I think it's amusing. And I actually gave my mum one of the cases. It was like she uses lots of little pencil cases for organising lots of things. And this bit, I can't remember what it said. But Abby was like, oh, do you think that's too far? And I'm like, oh, honey, Nana will love this. And my mum thought it was the best thing ever. Literally dumped. She's got one, one little thing that she uses all the time. My mum has a lot of health issues, so she has a lot of tablets and she keeps them all in one in her bag and she literally dumped everything out of this one and it was the one she used all and refilled her brand new one and so Abby was like oh my god she's gonna take this one everywhere I was like yeah I told you she'd like it I wanted to grab it but then I'd have to explain it to my six-year-old oh that is totally the advantage of when your kids get older I am I was actually talking with a friend last night and I was like I was looking at photos from 2012 because there's that 2012 to 2018 thing and and I was going to do it and then I was like nah there's not that much I mean a, I only found like four photos of me and none of which I wanted to share um and um but I found all these like amazing photos of Abby and, and when her hair was really long like Abby had very long hair for a while and it was also when she was like into dirt biking, but she also spun yarn and, you know, it was like, she was my little crafting buddy. We would sit on the couch together and she would knit and I would crochet. And I was like, and I was saying to my friend, I, you know, I really miss this girl. And she was like, don't worry, she'll be back. She knows how to do it now. You know, when she, when she gets past being a teenager, she'll come back. And I'm just like, I hope so. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things that as they get older, it's one, that's one of the advantage advantages of when they get older, you don't have to worry so much about that stuff. Um, I'm not a parent, but I agree that proper use of profanity is, um, is a convo that needs to be had. Not all swearing is bad and you can be plenty offensive without swearing. I totally, totally agree with you. And I also think they need to understand that it's okay to swear for adults to swear or for adults or older people to use colourful language in certain instances without it being in any way offensive, but it's never okay for a six-year-old, 10-year-old, 13-year-old Abby. Um, <laughs> you have to wait till you're just that smidge bit older. And in the meantime, you can come up with some cool offensive stuff that's not actually using curse words. And so you can use your brain and come up with your own things that Abby's hilarious. She comes up with stuff all the time and she's trying to be like serious, like she's grumpy. And so she's come up with something and then you've just cracked yourself up laughing at what she said and has the absolute opposite effect. And therefore it becomes a joke. And then she's like, yeah, I suppose. So she's still at that age. Um, also the way that children and adults speak is different for good reason. I, I totally. I totally agree. And I think it's important that adults speak to children differently. Um, not everybody agrees with me. Like I don't, I don't mean baby talk. I just mean ex understanding that they don't understand all the nuances. Um, I have no problem with my teen son swearing, just not at anyone. And that's another thing. If it just comes out like as an ex, like you know, a general conversational thing, but it's like if you're a, you know. Brrr, then that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother conversation right there. Um, yeah, and, and I also think it's different for every single family and every single child because different people take things different ways and depending on your social circles or the people that you interact with, 
You may or may not want anything even accidentally poking out of the mouths of your children, um, no matter what age they are. So I think, I think it's conversations that everyone needs to have with themselves to work out what they do and don't want to happen with their children. Does that make sense? Yes, parent your own children. This is how I parent mine and I'm okay with it. Does that make sense? I think that made sense. Um, I've worked very hard to think about how I talk to kids. So many people speak down to kids and I believe that they're smart and that, oh, they totally are. And when they do speak down to them, like if someone speaks down to Abby, you can like, you can see the look on her face. It's instantly saying, I am not a moron, which cracks me up because she sort of just sits there and takes it like, yep. Okay. And then she walks away and then she'll look at me and be like, and you're like, yeah, you know, just move on, honey, move on. <laughs> just get used to it. It's going to be part of life. And I'm like, you know, it's part of being a human person because there's, there's adults that speak down to other adults based on appearance or based on perceived um, things that they've come up with in their own brains about how they may or may not be better than another person. And so it's just a skill that you have to learn. Um, Kim says, honestly, though, if your kids have unrestricted access to YouTube or other kids who do, then it's a lost cause to think that they won't hear the words that you never want them saying. That's the thing. You have to educate them because you're not the only voice in their head. They are, even if they don't have unrestricted access to YouTube, like Abby doesn't have unrestricted access, but she does have access and she has access to Netflix and she has access to television. Now I age gate as much stuff as I can but I'm not the only person that she speaks to. So she has to, she has to learn that while something's being said by another person and she's hearing it does not mean that she can repeat it. And sometimes she'll come up to me and she'll be like, Hey, I was watching this YouTube video. They said this, what does that mean? And I'll explain it. And then I'll go, but I don't ever want to hear you saying it. So I'm okay with her understanding it and learning it. But I think she needs to understand why I don't want her to say it, like why it is and is not appropriate. I just whacked the microphone. I hope that wasn't bad for you guys. Bob Wilson, one, two, three. Hello. What did you miss? You've missed everything. No, we're having um, discussions about all sorts of things. This is a regular fiberific random, random chat. Um, Kim says, both my kids' first F-bomb exposures were due to YouTube gameplay videos for Lego games. Yeah, it's bizarre. It's very bizarre how you wouldn't expect it to be with the Lego game, but they're in there because you have human people responding to things. So sometimes those responses are less than stellar. Um, Kim says, you missed the mystery yarn club stuff. No, she hasn't missed it. I'm sure I'll rehash again. You know what I'm like, Kim. I like repeat myself 14 times, don't I? Um, so yeah, so it's it's one of those things we were talking about um, how some people's mystery lace clubs are hanging out in post offices. Some some are waiting to be picked up. Um, so yeah, so it's there's all sorts of stuff going on. I've been stalking everyone's tracking information, and uh, Kim's got, Kim's been posting some amazing spoiler pics over on Ravelry if you want to see them. Um, Kim says, I'm going to see how many times I can throw that into the conversation. Yeah, I'm, I do need a little prompts and reminder, don't I, Kim? I'm terrible. Sorry, I'm just pulling some yarn because I went stupid and went centre pool ball. We did talk about the weather. We, uh, we talked about the weather a fair bit, actually, because the weather here is pretty, pretty ordinary. Actually, it's actually really not ordinary. It's extraordinary, but I don't like it. So, yeah, it's, that's what's happening. Mm. Uh, and the hashtags yeah the hashtags thing was um, I don't know what we're going to do about that hashtags thing Bob Wilson's cutting onions okay um, do you cry when you cut onions because I've been trying all the different ways to cut onions so that my t eyes don't go all watery because by the time I cut onions I can't actually see what I'm doing and I'm like, try not to cut your fingers. Um, so yeah, I've I've worked out the least teary is to not cut the little furry end off. 
So you've got like the onions are shaped like this with the bowl at the bottom and they've got the little fairy bit where the roots would normally grow out of. And if I don't cut that off, then um, yeah, I don't um, cry so much, but I don't know. Vanessa says it depends on how juicy the onion is. It really does. And that's the thing. My, um, my husband's grandfather used to grow onions and they keep for 12 to 18 months if you keep them correctly. And that's not even refrigerated. That's just them drying a bit. And so I get frustrated when I go to Woolies and my onions don't last two weeks because that means they're already over 12 months old. Um, Tyra says nothing works. So she just buys pre-cut onions. But I want onions like diced and sliced and in rounds. I want onions for all different things. Um, Elaine says, I'm waiting for my little one's first sweater. We should stop watching so many true crime. Um, we should stop watching so many true crime TV with her. Oh, you're waiting for your little one's first sweater. I've got sweaters on the brain. Sorry, that made no sense for a second there. Yeah, you do. You kind of wait for it. Um, when we're hanging out with one of my brothers, he's a, he is a massive dropper of of all real bad swear words and it's really funny when he swears in front of abby because we don't swear very much like not not the words he uses and um and so he'll be like he'll try to backtrack and i'm like if you do that she notices it even more and he's like oh sorry sorry so she'll be like she'll giggle more that he's all stressed out um i heard if you cut in front of fan then the fumes will be blown away that's actually a good point. Speaking of sweaters, how's Chicken E going? Um, I'm just crocheting a blanket right now. <laughs> I'm, I don't know what it is about the Chicken E. I'm, I'm up to the sleeves. I'm st I have not touched it. I've moved. I've literally picked it up and moved it to different places. Like I'm going to sit here and knit and bring it with me and then do something else. So Chicken E has not moved forward at all. Not due to anything in the pattern or anything untoward or bad. Just that... I don't know. I've got other things I want to work on. So what are you all guys working on right now? So um, Claire is cutting onions. I'm trying to crochet a blanket for Abby face. So, you know, hopefully this one will go on a bed. The last one's on the couch. So because she wants a blanket on the couch. So she's got one on the couch now. So hopefully this one will stay in a bed. Um, the other one's also cotton and she... And I basically said, hey, I want to make you this thing um, in these colors doing this. What do you think? So I didn't give her any options, excuse me, because I already had the yarn and I wanted to do this chevron thing because I'd been watching the craftsy class um, while I was dying and I just wanted to make this. Um, Allegra says, I'm working on my sock madness round one socks. How is that going? That's insane. I've been watching some bits and pieces through the threads you guys are mental like absolutely mental vanessa is making things for max to chew on as in food things or crafty things um kim says i'm contemplating getting my project and sewing ends yay ends my favorite for someone who hates sewing in ends i actually really like mattress stitching which seems bizarre that i don't actually like sewing in ends um I swear I'm going to bury my dad in onions and popcorn. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, Allegra's not looking for the duplicate stitch. I, I'm not a fan. I'm really not a fan of duplicate stitching. Like, I understand the advantages of it. I really do. I just don't enjoy doing it. Um, Nat's knitting her Royal Marshall. I really need to make some sweaters this year, especially since I have about four sweater quantities of yarn. Yeah, that might be a job. Elaine's weaving in some ends. Oh, weaving. Working on a weaving, trying to figure out a pattern. I walked a baby loom to practice because I have to keep on doing it because the yarn's too fuzzy. Oh, I don't want to make the yarn too fuzzy. That's the catch with weaving. It's better if it's one and done. Um, uh, Kim, I do both, but I've started with crochet. Just I'm working at... Yeah, that's right. Joss is literally at work trying not to get busted watching us. So I have a giggle every week when Joss manages to sneak in a comment. Um, but I've just done number 29, dwelly out of 30. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that you managed to get all 30 done. Well, you haven't quite, but you're going to for sure. 
Um, do you have enough cotton for Joss? Uh, for Joss, Joss. Kim wants to know if you have enough cotton to do all 30. And Vanessa says, I chew, I sewed, I sewed, chew suck pads for the Ergo baby carrier that I use 10,000 times a day. Is that one of those like, um, you know, you wrap yourself up in it and kind of stuff the baby in it? Is that, is that the one? What did we call, what, a, what was my one called? It was called a Hugabub. Mine was called a Hugabub. And it was this massive long piece of t-shirt fabric that you wrapped yourself up in like a crazy thing and there's a magic place to place the baby. Um, Joss has enough, Kim. I need to make more crochet teething biscuits to freeze so he can chew. I'm, I used to just put an ice cube in a tea towel and let Abby chew on those. I'm such a good mum. <laughs> oh dear. Yep. We won't go into that. <laughs> yes, baby wearing. Excellent. Um, I had a hug above, but it's too heavy for it and it's and it was too stretchy. Yeah, I, I think I hug above Abby up until she was about 18 months. Um, and she, no, no. Would she have been 18 months? Uh, maybe not. Maybe more like 14 months because she was about 14 kilos when I stopped doing it. And I was like, right, <laughs> my back feels heaps better now, funnily enough, that I'm not lugging 14 kilos tied to my chest anymore. Um, I quite like the hug above. I bought, I picked mine up a very long time ago. Um, Elaine says, I made several baby carriers. They're fun to make. I rarely go to places where she needs to be carried. So they're all barely used. Oh, see, I used to carry Abby every, I used to carry Abby around the house so I could do stuff and have two free hands. Cause she was a very tactile baby and really, really wanted to be near you. Like, and she, she didn't, yeah, she was very much into it. And it's really good. Cause I think it's actually made her more independent now. Cause she wants to get away from me. <laughs> so I think the whole, you know, if you carry your babies too much, you'll turn them into sissies thing. That didn't happen with Abby. It turned her into a like, oh my God, will you just let me be alone in a room? Um, <laughs> totally the opposite. Totally the opposite. I think I'm nearly at the end, you guys. Oh, look at that. I've just got that much to go and I'm at the end of a row. And then it's time to change colors. Changing colors. Back to the gray. Um, on this particular... Uh, particular project I'm actually weaving in the colors as I go um, I don't normally do that I'm normally an end weaver but one of the things that they pointed out in this the um, in the crafty class that I was doing was that especially with projects like this where you've got like the kinks like the kinks um, where you've got the um, the curves and stuff sometimes that's enough and because of I've added in like a little twist that I do I feel it's secure enough and I also make a really long tail so I do it for a long time um Elaine says once in a while I strap her to my back and walk on the treadmill holy cow you are just intense I used to just strap Abby to me so that I could cross stitch <laughs> um Max is very clingy right now. Yeah, they get to that age where they do not want you to leave them ever, ever. Um, yeah, it's one of those things. I have a cat going through that phase at the moment. I hate to compare the two, Vanessa, I'm sorry. But one of my cats at the moment, she's, she's a bit older and she's not normally very, um, she's quite happy to look at you and let you look at her. And she's quite happy for you to pat her, but don't try to pick her up or put her on your lap or anything like that. She's never liked that sort of thing. But lately, whenever you sit down now, she sort of comes over and she doesn't so much sit on you, but she sits right near you. And that just, that's unusual for her. Um, Kim says, I got an email saying I could get the unlimited for 80 bucks for a year. I would do it. I paid Australian 150, so that's a bargain. Um, and because like the thing for me, right, hands down, arms crossed. The thing for me with the Craftsy Unlimited is that I don't feel guilty if I'm not taking in all the information 
So I will put it, because like you guys know I've got my little shelf in the kitchen for when I'm dying, and I'll put my, my um, Surface Pro up there, and I will literally have a class running just for random things. And it's like it's craft-related background noise. And if it's something really interesting, I will, you know, reverse it back and re-watch it. Um, so, yeah, I just, I really struggle like with the whole oh you've got to sit there and watch it. I've never done that I don't have time to sit and watch a class I will have a class running while I'm doing something and I, I really like the um I like the unlimited because I can just continuously do that um Claire says your video title making deadlines how do you do them I never stress too much about them unless the deadline is for someone else but if they're my deadlines for tutorials over the years I've learned not to stress the world will not fall apart if a video or pattern is a day late. You are totally right. I I have the 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 particular title deadlines I was thinking of was the Mystery Lace Club going out on the 20th. Um and also, you know, the Thursday because I do this live chat every Thursday at 10 a.m. And I like to make it as routine for me as I possibly can so that it's routine for all of you guys who watch it. And that way, I know Kim actually blocks it out in her diary so that she doesn't book anything over it and can be at home and watching it. Um, and so that it's that way for everybody and it's not sort of hit and miss. And I found that, especially with my YouTube videos and things like that, that if I had a regular day and time, people could expect it. But I don't know if that, like, I mean, look at the difference in our channels. You're right, it doesn't matter. It totally doesn't matter. But I was thinking more along the lines of like, um because i said it before you know am i the only person who will make a decide to make some intricate crazy pattern for a gift and then allow nowhere near enough time for it and be like madly like knitting or crocheting at midnight trying to to get this thing finished in time because you did not plan and you did not create a reasonable deadline for yourself but yeah this week it's been excuse me I had um, the mystery lace club going out on Tuesday plus also this week is Firefix third birthday um, for its online store so I'm running promotions for that as well and just trying to keep everything flowing and everything um, moving but also like you know part of the problem I had with this particular week um, and where it fit in is Abby was sick and took time off school and then I got sick so I had two weeks where I couldn't do the things that I knew I needed to get done so that this week was smoother um, but in saying that all that pressure and everything that I put on myself everything got done and it was ridiculous amounts of pressure and you're totally right stressing about it doesn't help all it does is make you think less so yeah it's it's one of those things it's just it's hard um, and I think a lot of things are like self-imposed deadlines and self um, and sort of like I know full well that if I happen to have shipped out the Mystery Lace Club on the 21st instead of the 22nd, it would have been a smidge disappointing, but no one would die. You know what I mean? Like it's not life and death. It's a lace club. And... I just really wanted it to be special. I think it's what it was, is that I wanted the first one to work. Like if down the track something happens and it's more difficult or, you know, I get sick or something unforeseen pops up um, that I couldn't have planned around. See, my issue is if I plan around, if I don't plan around stuff that could have been planned around, like if I, um, uh, if I know I'm going on a holiday or something like that, but then I don't plan a contingency for other things that have to happen, then that's what, um, that bugs me. All right, I'm on to color change. So I'm just gonna reach over and grab the end because which, where are we? I want that over there. So the tail, I want a nice long tail, Chantel. Sorry, I have to talk to myself. Um, Elaine says, I wove my dad a rug that was for Christmas. I finally finished it two weeks ago. I gave it to him on his birthday and said, Merry Christmas. <laughs> I do that too. Like, I remember one time I decided to make Tim a jumper and gave him the back of it for his birthday. 
Um, disruption is totally, I don't like it when my plans are disrupted. Um, Kim says, I do Netflix for background noise. I tend to watch Craftsy for more specific skill learning. I bought a few classes because I wanted to learn particular stuff, but I haven't actually watched any of them yet. I don't know if I bought the unlimited, whether I would wait until the last month and then freak out because I hadn't used it. See, for me, I had a couple of things I really, really wanted to do. And um, one class was, it was, a, it was a, it was that quilting one, you have I've worked on that little quilted table topper and it was like $56 and then there was another one that was about another 30. So I wanted to spend $30 on these two classes and then it was like, well, if I spend, uh, not 30, 80, if I want to spend $80 on these two classes or 150 for the year. So what I did was I watched the two classes that I wanted. So that was my $80 value. And then I watched like another three or four classes. And so I already feel like I have my $150 worth of value. So I, I watch the, um, I've like, they've got, they've got photography classes and how to take good photos of your crafts and, and how to use natural light in photography and, and all these sorts of things. And you watch one or two of those and you are building up straight away, like what you need and don't need. And so it's, it's one of those things where, um, you can totally get the value. Hang on. I just want to, I just need to pull that and pull that. Sorry. One, two, and then turning. Um, Kim says she would have died if she came on Tuesday and there was no yarn box. Kim, if there was going to be no yarn box, I wouldn't have let you come all the way without, you know, with the, without there being one here. Like, I'm, I'm mean, but I'm not that mean. Now, I want to bring that down here. Sorry, I'm just... I'm not real good at weaving, at, at crocheting my ends in, and so I'm like Queen Fussy McFuss pants, and want it to sit exactly the right way while I'm doing it, and then do it. So now I want to pull that. There we go. Hide them yarns. Two right. Now I need to trim off the green ball, leaving a long tail. Um, working for yourself, we put more pressure on ourselves. It makes good boss but at the same time it works against us I totally agree I totally agree with that um, we do put the pressure on ourselves and it does make us better um, I'd like to say employees but you know I'm technically not my own employee <gasps> camera it's in the camera angle <laughs> um, but yeah it's it's oh it's a juggling act and I am not good with like I'm not good with unprepared juggling does that make sense like if I know I'm gonna need to do this at the same time as this and this and this and I've got the mental preparation for it happening I'm okay but if I sort of I'm like oh well I'm gonna be doing this and then I get somewhere and it's like well actually you need to do 14 things at the same time um, and I think that's one of the things why I was stressing out so much about this mystery lace club is I had a checklist and I checked off all this stuff and then I realized that I still had like three or four little tasks that need to get done on Monday. And then I realized one of the tasks was a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be. And so I was really stressed out about it and self-imposed stress yet again. And it wasn't a big thing and it wasn't actually all that important, but I just, yeah, it was just one of those things that deadlines and me, not the best of friends and I always seem to sorry I'll put that back in the camera for you guys um, I always seem to be working right up to the deadline I don't ever seem to allow myself quite enough time what it is is I and I need to think of this when I'm planning is I plan out certain amounts of time for a task it's like this task will take three hours and it's like yes it will but will you get three hours in a go or do I actually need to plan out seven hours for this task because in between you doing this task you're going to have to stop and run to the shop to get milk because your daughter wants to do this and then you need to stop to help with homework and you need to make dinner and it's it's and I forget and I quite often forget that I can't just plow through I've got to stop do these other tasks that are equally as important in my day-to-day -day life um, or family life so yeah, it's, 
I'm just very bad at this sort of at the the, the time management and deadlines and and things like that. I'm getting better and more practice is helping. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Kim says, joking, I wouldn't have died, um, but you would have cried. <laughs> I uh, Fair enough. That's a fair call. Mm, for sure. So, yeah. So, so working to our project deadlines, it's actually making a realistic idea of how long it will take you, like, and then allowing extra time for actual life. Um, my throat just all of a sudden got a bit raspy and dry there. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's one of those crazy, crazy things that, hang on, I've kept done too many stitches. Two, four, six. Hang on a second. I've done heaps too many t stitches. Oh, pull them back. It's what happens when you talk and do your thing. You are singing my song. <laughs> Yeah, the, the not allowing for actual life to be involved in, in, our, in our planning time. Like, how dare you life? Um, now, I like to, like to twist that around there. You didn't see that, did you? Because it's my stealth mood. You're not allowed to see that. No. I'll show, I'll, if, if you guys are interested, one day I'll make a video on it, on how I... Oh, what have I done there? I pulled the wrong... I pulled the wrong end. It's your fault. Hang on. Now I've pulled this all up. There we go. Make it pretty. Make it pretty. Wrap that over there. Get it out of the way. One, two. And then. I can't count. How do you count to two again, you guys? One and two. Um. Kim says, that's the problem with projects too. I can't say that it will take 10 hours to make something, but that's the actual craft time. Yeah, totally. And she still hasn't warped her loom. Oh, Kim, that's just sad right there. You'll get there. You'll get there. You'll, you'll work out a way to invent extra hours in a day and then you'll sell us all a book on how Kim invented extra hours in a day so that she could warp her loom and still be a wife and mother and crafter and helping buddy. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Is there something going on, you guys? Um, I, is there still audio? Are oh, you wanna play with the wave shuttle? Oh, you scared me, Kim. I thought there was something broken. I had a heart attack for a second there because you guys know it's. It wouldn't be unusual for something to crash and burn. Um, Rebecca, I try to be a good test knitter, but every time I do a test knit, everything else comes crashing down, so I stopped doing test knitting. Yeah, I had to do that um, a couple of years ago. Well, quite a few years ago now, I had to stop doing all of that because I couldn't. Com I, I would commit to a deadline, and then I couldn't actually make it for whatever reasons. Um, so yeah, it was. It was one of those crazy, um, it was just, it was, it was not for like pay or anything like that. It was just helping out, but I had to, I don't like it if I can't, um, if I can't let my word sort of be my word, then I don't, I don't want, I don't want to do it. So I ended up sort of giving all that sort of stuff up and then I started a business. So, you know, um, Oh, yeah, sorry, guys. So Kim was just stressing me out like she was talking about something else. And then I thought that there was an issue. So Bob Wilson, who has not been to any of our chats before, is not aware of how many technical issues we have at times um, with things crashing and burning and falling down in the middle of live chats. We haven't had it since I've worked out what I was doing wrong, which is nice. Um, knock wood. So yeah, we'll make, you know, we'll keep going. We'll keep, keep that working and hopefully, um, hang on. I just want to check to make sure that does, that doesn't look too bulky with the ends woven in there, does it? Looks all right. I think it looks okay. It'll flatten out more as I do the next round too, I think. Um, but yeah, so, and this, and then I'll just trim that bit off at the back later. So it's gone down past a V and over another V. Um, Allegra says, I enjoy test knitting because I usually help the designer by giving the pattern a proper tech edit too. Yes, yeah, that, that's an issue I have. Sometimes when people have asked for tech, test knitting, 
I do a tech edit because it's what I used to do. And then they don't, they're not happy. That's not what they wanted. And they're quite happy with how it was written. Um, Kim said, uh, Rebecca says, I did buffer a couple of times, but it's fine now. Oh, I hope so. We do have like crazy, crazy weather here. So I would not be at all surprised if we have some rain fade or some sort of evil um, thing going on. Um, so I think we're just being very, very exceptionally lucky. Um, Kim says, plus with your super cold aircon today, hopefully you won't overheat. I'm really hoping for that. I'm sitting here so chilly and I am loving it. Like my feet are like, can we have a sock blank as a blanket, please? <laughs> and I'm like, no, sock blanks are for sale. You cannot have one. Um, but yeah, it's, it's one of those crazy things. Oh, guys, I just remembered because Kim was talking about the wave shuttles. Um, I got an email from Margicraft and the blue bobbins are on their way. I'd pre-ordered some for when they got them in. And so their blue bobbins for the Margicraft wheels are coming. I'm going to set up a pre-order over on the website so that if anyone wants to get in first, they can. Um, I figured it was the weather that was playing with the live chat. Cool. Um, Bob says, oh no, I get the behind the scenes all the time. My next tutorial has been uploaded twice. Oh no, I hate that. Um, don't get on the AU internet speed soapbox so you know we always have problems when you do. Yes, I know. Oh yes, I won't, I promise, not today. Also, I'm pretty happy with the speeds we've been getting now that I stopped being a dum-dum. So, you know, um, I mean, I'm gonna stop talking. <laughs> I'm gonna stop talking about that. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 chilly in here. There are piles of gorgeous sock blanks around looking at me, threatening to be blankets and shawls. I could literally pop out to the counter and grab a shawl if I wanted, um, which you know feels weird because like I know how hot it is outside. Um, but yeah, it's it's been it's been fun. I know there's been actually. Um, I know there's been some issues with uploading on YouTube at the moment from YouTube's end, not from anyone else's end. And I know that some people, even big YouTubers, are struggling that their notifications aren't going out to people within the 24 hours. Like they're not getting the views because no one knows there's a video there, even people who have clicked the bell. So that's got to be seriously frustrating. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things. It's totally one of those things. It's just part of part of this ecosystem that we work in and play in. I practically live in it. Um, oops, I don't need a double crochet there. <laughs> Kim says I have a darn needle magnetized to the front of my laptop where the speaker is. So do you guys remember a few weeks ago when I was weaving in all the ends on that, that last blanket? And I couldn't find a needle and had to run out and grab another needle. And I was like, I swear I brought one in. Turns out it was it was actually the same sort of thing. When I was packing everything up, I found it sitting up next to, um, uh, I'll just put my hand in front of the camera. Like where I've got a magnetic uh, power input for my Surface Pro, which is so that if you pull on it, it just comes out. It doesn't knock over your laptop. And it was sitting there and like, cause I had a quick look cause I assumed it could be that, but it was on the back and needles are so fine that I didn't even see it until I unplugged the power and I'm like, had a needle in my hand. And I was like, oh my God, I did have one the whole time. Um, Bob Wilson says, I love your setup you have going on in this chat. Oh, thank you. Um, I love doing live chats. I, I really enjoy them. YouTube is like a toddler, constant supervision needed, but who has the time for that? Oh, I totally agree. Um, I do try to keep on top of all the things though, because like if there's a problem, A, I don't want to exacerbate it and B, I'd rather avoid it if at all possible. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy when, you know, like a big part of my sort of business relies on the internet and, you know, hanging out with you guys here on YouTube. And then when I have actually zero input control whatever in this particular platform that connects us that's why I'm always like go and join the Facebook group go and join up with Ravelry so if something happens here we can still all talk to each other and we don't we don't totally miss out and sometimes you know 
if something happens I'll announce on Facebook and on Instagram that I'm not going to be live here for whatever reason um, yeah so it's important that we all sort of keep connected in other places because while I really love YouTube and I think it's a really great place sometimes it has its issues so yeah it's one of those things it's it makes it safe don't put all your eggs in one basket is what I'm saying am I working from the oh gosh for a second there I thought I was working from the outside of this ball oh I was reading a thing on Facebook the other day and someone in one of the groups I cannot remember which group it was or who it was that said it but she asked the question how do you get the middle out of a center pool ball and then someone's written how she does it which is pull out a handful of mush and then try and find the end in that and then try and stuff the middle back into the ball and go from there so last night I was like trying to find the end of this ball and I realized I had to pull the middle out of the ball try and just get through the pile of mush and then try and shove it back inside the ball and I was like that is exactly how you get the middle out of, out of your uh, center pool balls does anyone have any tips for getting the middle out like finding your end out of the middle of a center pool ball I don't always work from the um, from the inside but sometimes I do and when I do I'd like to be able to do it without that <laughs> like there's my ball my beautiful bendigo ball here is the middle of gunk that I had to pull out to find the end that I'm now working on so any tips would be greatly appreciated pop them in the comments either here or if you're watching back later put them in the comments down below um, that would be it's totally totally helpful so today my plans involve um, things like posting orders I've got a couple of skeins of yarn I still want to rewind you can see there's a there's a few of the eight ply in the um, they look really dark blue over there they're not that dark the eight ply in the Remington that needs to be rewound they're up on the website but they've just got to be wound back like wound into pretty skeins plus get up there and stay there please um, plus also there is a dentist appointment which I'm not looking forward to um, Bob Wilson has a video for that I'm totally hitting your channel after after this so I'm gonna find it am I allowed to share a link to your video in my Facebook group for those of us that also want to find it uh, in the fiberific fun zone that we have um, Stacy says never can do with the Bendigo balls always use from the outside I normally do um, there's a theory about the football shaped ones which is a the football shaped ones are they the like longer ones that you get or is, or is this a football shaped one I don't know um, that if you squash the two ends toward the middle you loosen the core and then you can reach it with two fingers and find the end more easily I'm totally gonna try that on every single ball ever that would be totally worth a try no matter what um, so yeah so that would that sounds interesting I'll have to have a play with that and I'm totally checking out Claire's video I'm going to hunt it down and put it in the fiberific fun zone if I'm allowed. Um, just a link to your YouTube channel that is nothing crazy like I'll just re-upload it myself. Um, yeah so what have you guys got planned for the afternoon? I'm you know my afternoon is going to be filled with hopefully the dentist going it's fine it's just a checkup so it's you know there's nothing hurting so that's good. I think you should do a video of you trying Bob Wilson's method. I don't I don't know I don't know how I feel about those videos um, yeah the regular shaped acrylic ones oh okay okay I think I know the ones like the what are they called I think that's what's officially called a skein because like I get I mix it all up myself and I know I do it wrong because I call the hanks the twisted hanks of yarn that I sell I call them skeins even though I know now that that's incorrect and I think that the ones you're thinking of like the like the spotlight yarns and things like that yes like the, the style crafts and the marvels etc I think there's I think they're called skeins of yarn I could
could be wrong. There's a whole sheet. I'll find the sheet. Someone's made an amazing, amazing reference sheet. I'll see if I can find it and share it. Um, but yeah, it's one. It, yeah, it's uh, and the reason I'm funny about those do, me doing a version, a video of me trying Bob Wilson's method, is because they either come one of two ways. Either a, it just comes across that you're copying someone else's idea, which I don't like. Or B, it looks like you're taking the mickey out of someone else's idea, whether you're intending to or not. And I know more often than not, it's meant to be taking the mickey out of me because I'm like failing like miserable. Um, but I don't know, I, I, I always feel weird watching those videos that it was like, I don't know. It's me, isn't it? It's just me who thinks it's weird. What am I doing? I'm doing it, I'm doing it two together because I'm in a valley and it's time to finish the valley and then go and do the peak. Um, yeah, I've got a really bizarre sense of like, what can I sleep? Like, what can I sleep after doing? Like, if will I wake up feeling bad about something if I do that? Or will I not? Or will I feel okay about it? And it's different if you've got like, it's an arrangement and a plan. That's a whole nother thing. But if it's just like you just trawling the internet, copying other people's videos, or trying to do it the way they say I don't know I don't know there's there's a whole channel that that's what they do and I'm just not sure how I feel about it I don't know what do you guys think do you think it's weird or do you think it's just my brain overthinking things yet again um you can do it live next week <laughs> there you go I could certainly try, I suppose. I could only fail. Um, but yeah, I tend to overthink these things. I tend to overthink it. Um, you, you could, Bob, you could, as a guest on your channel showing. Okay, so Tara, just so you know, Bob Wilson's a lady. Her name is Claire and she's wonderful. Um, as a guest on your channel showing the technique and teaching you the technique. And we live nowhere near each other, which is terrible. Um... But I like your idea and that's a good way to do things like that where it's it's the actual person's getting the, the opportunity to teach you. Um, you are assuming you won't be successful. Oh, I never am the first time. I've got to try things like 17,000 times. <laughs> no, it's fine, Tara. Um, I asked the question of where, where the name came from a while ago because I was really confused myself. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those things. Uh, let me let me count for a sec you guys stop talking to me i'm trying to count i'm fine now you can you can start talking to me again um but yeah it's it's i don't know i just i suppose i overthink all this stuff because i don't like it when i hear about like i read those posts on facebook where someone's copied someone's technique or someone's done this or you know upset a person because i've done this other thing and i just i don't know i don't like it or Kim, I'm going to take away your spanner. That's mean. I'm not even counting now and it's mean. Just it's cruel. Kim's counting numbers while I'm while I was trying to crochet. Who does that? Isn't that isn't there some sort of rule that you just don't do that to your to your crafting buddies? You just you just don't do it you you just don't it's not done i would think right am i the only one who thinks that she's wrong um didn't i try to get rid of my spanner we said yeah you did yeah and i won't let you give it up i'm like ha 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 you must keep it only i may take your spanner away now you could probably resign your spanner if you wanted um i've just realized i don't know if you guys are seeing this or not but i think my camera is struggling to keep focused on my crochet hand. Um, Kim is quite funny. I, I quite like Kim. Kim can stick around a bit longer. I agree with you, um, Rebecca. Oh dear. So where are we at? We're we're nearly at done time, you guys. Oh my gosh. I cannot believe how fast. It's because I've been waxing on all, all dramatic and stuff again, isn't it? It's because I go off on little tangents and and I forget the time and and then I just lose the plot basically and then have to run away like be like I've got to go bye bye and run really fast 
I will, I'll try not to do that today. Um, I know. I can't believe where that 90 minutes went either. It's, it's insane. It's just, I mean, it's nice when it goes really quick. I know that the other, was it last week where I just didn't quite make, I made an hour, I think, or just short of an hour because I was just still under the weather and, and I sort of was like, struggling a lot like I know today I've struggled a little bit it's because I don't know why I'm cold <laughs> it's just because I struggle um but yeah it's it's one of those things it's just really I've just got a reminder on my phone to tell me to have my lunch <laughs> like, not yet Rebecca says I don't know it only feels like it's been about 15 minutes I think it's because you guys have been really active in the chat today as well and I think that really helps to keep the conversation moving as when you guys get involved and you guys talk as well I think um, I actually really enjoy it being able to sort of bounce off what I'm reading as well I don't feel like it's quite so one-sided like sometimes I sit here thinking seriously it it's um, who wants to hear someone talk for 90 minutes but when it's like this it feels more like a conversation and I don't feel so weird about it um Kim says it doesn't seem like you're struggling um okay good that's great I'm glad I'm very glad because that would be torture to watch oh my god it's like watching someone try so hard to keep going it just doesn't work that would be horrible to watch um we don't want to make this torture for you guys Hey, did you hear there were some deliveries this week for the Mystery Yards Club? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did hear something about the Mystery La Yarn Club um, that uh, someone has one. What's her name? What's her name? Oh, yeah, Fiberific. Fiberific has a Mystery Yarn Club and that she sent it out this week and that some people have it and some people don't and that there's more stuff coming and that apparently Granville um, Postal Centre is hogging heaps of them. Selfish Postal Centre right there. Um, and, and Underwood as well, which is my local one. So there's still some sitting around here, which I think is insane. I think you need a second hank of yarn. What have I done wrong? What do I need a second hank of yarn for? Just out of curiosity. It's time to do the thingy. Um, but yeah, so there's... Oh, you mean in the kit? You, oh. um, Bob Wilson says, it's been fine, fantastic to join in. We'll put in my schedule for some time out for me. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. We'll be happy to have you again another time. Um, so so I don't have to wind my pretty hank into a car. Ah, oh. Tara, you're totally right. Kim is being greedy. What it is, is Kim and I were talking last night and she doesn't want to wind her pretty skein that she's been padding into a cake to use it. So she wants another cake so, or another hank so that she can keep one. Not happening. Well, actually, it can totally happen because the members of the club will be getting an email outlining some stuff that talks about this sort of stuff. So, yeah. Um, I need, not you need. Oh, okay. You need it. All right. No, no. <laughs> um, but they're pretty in cake form too. Look, I'm sure they probably, I'd actually haven't wound this one into a cake yet to play with it. I've been too busy making sure they went out the door in time for everybody. Um, so specific. Oh, I know, right? Try to be so specific at all times. Never vague never never vague um pet peeve when people are vague and like allude to things and don't actually follow through with any information whatsoever never do that ever ever secret squirrel stuff members only stuff is what it is kim members only so yeah um so it was a decision that i came to after a discussion last night and yes currently members only um oh so quick story before i run away i'll pop those over there um oh come on you're gonna fall down there we go um when i was winding all the yarn i was like madly winding some skeins on tuesday 
and I was tying off to make it all pretty and I snipped the end and I snipped through the skein of yarn, like three strands off the skein of yarn. I'm like, ah, and I like completely flipped it. I'm like, oh my God. So I've put it aside and skeined others. So yesterday I actually got the, um, got to skein, the, re-skein the yarn to see how much I lost. And I was so happy that um, when I re-skeined it, I ended up with two really short pieces, like literally less than a meter and they just came straight out. Um, and then there was one join and it still came to like 109 grams. So I was like, sweet, I don't feel bad about that. Um, Tara says, don't run or I'll be chastised again. Yeah, that's actually a really good point, no running. Bob Wilson, however, is running. It was nice to meet, and she says, it was nice to meet us all. She obviously doesn't know us very well. Um, it was great that you could join us today. Thanks for hanging out, Bob Wilson. 123. Bob Wilson 123 has an amazing crochet channel here on YouTube. You guys need to go and check it out and subscribe to her and watch her amazing videos. Um, Kim says, Ooh, I have a mini. Ooh, oh, can I have a mini one from that scale? Um, like, they're like a meter long. If you want them, you can have them. But, yeah, sure. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, so Claire does these amazing videos, the beautiful, beautiful crochet, um, all different stuff all the time. And so if you're into crochet and yarn, then you need to go and check out and hit up her channel as well. And you can tell her that, you know, you can comment and say you found her from here because then she knows where she remembers your name from. Two, four, six, because for some reason I always do one too many at this throw that over there at the um at the valley and like I know how to remember to do it I know where I'm supposed to stop and I don't because I just I get in the groove and just keep going and just forget that I've got to do the things um Tara's doing numbers girl um see you later we get we're all going to go soon we're gonna I'm gonna sign off in a couple of minutes and go and prepare myself for the dentist yay and um i mean like it's one of those things i'm grateful that i live in a society that i can go to the dentist and i am grateful for that i'm grateful that i don't have to um go anywhere too far away to do this and that that i have health insurance that means i can just get checkups which is really important but God, I hate going, honestly. And I have really nice dentists and I just really hate going. Kim has popped a link up for uh, Bob Wilson 123's YouTube channel. So um, right click that so you don't run away. Repeating what you said. Oh. <laughs> um, yes. Just happened to be right when I was doing them. Oh no, yarn on the ground, yarn down, yarn down. I dislike dentists too. Look, I don't. I was actually talking to the dentist about it, and I was like telling her like, I really feel bad because I do dread coming in, and it's nothing personal against you. You're lovely. She goes, do you know what? Everybody is the same, and you. There's whole seminars and whole workshops that they do when they're becoming dentists to accept that their job is dreaded by majority of people. Um, <laughs> Nat ate her filling over the weekend, so yay, that's fun. Um, yeah, it's the dentist tools. I agree. I totally agree. Um, Vanessa says it's the sign of a responsible adult. Yeah. Also, I'm trying to set an example for Abby, which I, you know, I don't like doing. Um, I'm not. I'm not that good a parent. Um, even if they aren't doing anything. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I suppose. And being in this room today, being extra chilly, means that I'll be prepared for the the chill in their room. Um, Kim says, I have to actually make myself relax and unclench my fists and everything. I don't bother trying to uh, relax. Seriously, I just get through it. And they know to work fast. I go to um, a particular dentist that deals with anxious, uh, anxious, um, what do we call patients? And so they know that, that I'm anxious. Abby actually has to wear noise cancelling headphones. She cries through the visits because of the sound. When she was younger, we couldn't vacuum when she was home because the sound would, that high, there's a high pitch. And if something hits that high pitch, even now as she's getting older, you see like wincing 
And so, whereas when she was younger, she just would cry. But at the dentist, it just does it every time. So we, we've learned to take our noise cancelling headphones and her iPad. And then that's fine. She can get through a complete clean and everything with no hassles. So that's, you know, we just work around things. We work, we find out what works and we do it because we're human people and we're all different and we all need different workarounds. My mum has to go and actually go to the doctors first and get sedatives because she's had some very traumatic experiences at the dentist and will literally, has literally punched one in the face and run away. And like my mum is a little, little like version of me with even more busted legs. So watching her run anywhere is actually quite amusing. So, you know, that she would actually do that and run away is kind of sad and terrifying. So she knows what she has to do and that's what she has to do. Um, Tara says, my son would cry through haircuts. The buzzer used to irritate his ears. He can do it now, but, but still scissor around his ears. Yeah, that's the thing. Like our bodies are so susceptible to changes in pressure and noises and they're fragile things and we have to protect them because we only get the one as I'm learning every day with these stupid knee problems that I'm having we only get the one body and there's some parts that can be replaced turns out not knees um, not in my instance anyway and um, we just have to learn to protect what we have in saying that you guys um, I I'm going to sign off for today. I will catch you all again next week. Make sure that you are in the Fibrific Fun Zone, that you've clicked like on this video. There's so many things for you to do. So many things, ready? Write them down. Click like on this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the little ding bell so that you get notified when stuff's going on. Then go to Facebook, join the Fibrific Fun Zone. <laughs> Then go, then go over to Instagram and follow the Fiber, follow Fiberific. If you really want, you can follow Fiberific on Twitter. I, although that's generally mostly geeky stuff. Um, I'm not very good with Twitter, but yeah, lots of things to do. Anyway, you guys have a fantastic Wednesday night, Thursday, um, and also wonderful weekends. Get your crafts on, keep safe, and look after yourselves. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.